guys, welcome to the very first episode of Cloverfields. It's Cloverfields, a.k.a. Clover Boys. Clover that, Boys. That's going to be the a.k.a. Leal Clover Boys. Leal Clover Boys. I'm your host, Steve Zaragoza, along with my host, yeah. Mike Falzone. We're both hosts. We're both this. hosts. Let's not kid each other here. There was one night I came over your house. It was the first night I came over your house. Your brand new house. And I saw a piece of memorabilia. You did. Inside of your closet. You did. And that piece of memorabilia was a Clover Times. Well, and I think that piece of memorabilia was the absolute nexus of this program. I don't know what a nexus is. the correct word, nexus? I don't know what that is. The zygote? I also don't know what that is. That's two things in a row. I don't, don't know what know. those things Guys, are. Guys, let me explain what this podcast is. Let me explain what a zeitgeist is. <laughs> a zeitgeist. We, it turns out Mike Falzone and I are big Cloverfield fans, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we didn't know it of, yeah. e- of each other until recently. So what this podcast is going to be is two Lee boys. We're just Lee boys. We're two <laughs> Lee movie boys <laughs> who love Cloverfield. Yeah. And our nerds and love movies. And basically what we're going to do is, is each week, that's ambitious, oh. we're going to talk about... We're gonna, once in a while. Every once in a while, we're going to talk about Cloverfield. And the new 10 Cloverfield Lane film, mm. which came out of fuck nowhere. Yeah, very excited. And is apparently a blood relative to Cloverfield. So we have another Cloverfield coming out. Which is already confusing to me because I was under the impression that the original boy. Yes. The big boy. Clovey. Clovey. Or Mr. Grumpy Pants, as some of them called in the sure. energy. Do you remember that? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll call him that. Mr. Grumpy Pants. Mr. Wasn't... Grumpy Pants. MGP, if you don't want to say the whole thing. I don't um, I don't know that I've made up my mind on whether or not I want to say the whole thing yet. But well, in, think about it. In my mind, he w- wasn't dead yet. You know? This thing wasn't dead. That was the whole uh, antithesis for well, the thing. I'm glad you bring dead. that up, Mike, yeah. because... Not only is that your theory, mm-hmm. that's also the film's confirmation. Oh, well, great. The film confirmed that Clovey, Mr. Grumpy Pants, MGP, yeah. is definitely still alive. When, when Cloverfield ends, yeah. there's the credit sequence. There is. The last thing it. we see is we see Rob and what was her name? I'm going to call her Betty Lee. Betty Lee. <laughs> Rob and Betty Lee. Yeah. The classic couple are uh, one of the more classic movie couples. Absolutely, they get crushed underneath the bridge. Yeah, because uh, they bomb New York. They nuke yeah. New York. They do nuke York. Unique New York. New York. Nuke, nuke they York. nuke New York. Yeah, and so they seemingly die in the end. Yeah, but then we get a credit sequence where we hear Michael Giacchino's beautiful Cloverfield score, which is maybe what you heard as our intro music. Who knows how, how well we've done. We, we haven't took figured us it three out. hours to, to set up multi-track recording. We're not going to talk about that. Part. Okay, we'll just edit that out if you want. We're not going to edit it out, but we're not going to talk about it. Well. I don't want to do more work than I have to on this podcast. <laughs> 52%. So really quick, uh, at the end of Cloverfield, there's this strange backwards message. Yeah. It's like, it's like, why do you think it's backwards? Because it's like backwards? supposed to be a trick. It's supposed to be a, like a little secret. Just a little secret. Just a little secret in the vein of the ARG, in the, in the vein of the game, the alternate reality game. Yeah. And when you play that backwards, it says, it's still alive. And, and I, which I took to mean that it was still alive. That's what you took it to mean. Right. And then but who everything knows the went truth? away for a long time. Yeah, that was 2008. And then J.J. Abramson got all these other jobs. Leal jobs, doing he Star got Trek. Leal jobs, big jobs. Star War. Yeah. He, he did, did the Super Star 8. War, I think. Yes, he did yeah. Super 8. But so, okay, before we get too ahead of ourselves. Okay. Because this is this is 2016. That yeah. was 20, uh, 2008. 20-odd 8 was like seven years ago, right? Well, if this is 2016 and it was 2008 back in the day, I think that's eight that's years. That's eight years ago. Yeah. So let's fast forward. Let's rewind first. We Sometimes you have to fast forward to rewind. I, I think, think everyone the important part. listening to this podcast should rewind it and listen from the beginning, from this point. Yeah. Listen to time. episode two. 
It's probably a lot better. <laughs> it's probably better. We probably hit our stride by that 51%. So here's what I want to say. Yeah. Eight years ago, mm-hmm. I was a Leo boy. Yeah, and you I went to a Leo. Weren't you? I was a, a Leo man. Well, no, I guess I was a Leo, a little man too. <laughs> yeah. I went to the theater to see Transformers. Okay. The Paramount film. And that's when you saw? That's when I saw the trailer for Cloverfield. Right. Or what? How did you see it? Trailer, for those of you who don't know, it's like a Leo movie. It's like a... <laughs> I love movies it. are I love how matter of factly minutes. you are about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For those of you that don't know, yeah. what a trailer is. I don't remember. I probably heard from someone who saw because I don't remember seeing. I remember seeing uh, Transformers, but I don't remember seeing the trailer. Mm-hmm. But I remember hearing somebody talk about how weird it was and that it was a found thing and that no one knew what it was right. and that the internet was just scrambling to figure out what it was and that it was rumored to be a monster movie. Okay. So I, so, okay. So my experience with it is going to see transformers mm. and seeing that trailer before the movie came out and yeah. thinking, what the fuck did I just see? Yeah. What was that? Was the that? one with the statue of the statue Liberty? Of Liberty. Yeah. yeah. And the, it's a lion. Remember when everyone thought they were saying it's, it's a lion. It's a lion. It's yeah. not a lion. Don't move, it's a lion. And then everyone whatever. thought it was like they were talking about the Voltron movie in the yes. forums. They're like, it's gonna be the Voltron movie. Everyone's I thought it was that. It and then I there did was too a, at there first. was a screenshot of like Silver Surfer or Yeah, someone. that's right. That's right. Yeah, and they were yeah. like, Oh shit, it's gonna be Galactus or some shit. Yeah. So it everybody wasn't. had their theories, but I remember thinking as a movie nerd, this movie came out of fucking nowhere. Mm-hmm. And I was like all over Ain't It Cool News. I don't know if I had discovered Slash Film yet, but I was all over Ain't It Cool News and at least Badass Digest or something like that, or Joe Blow. I was on Joe Blow and Ain't It Cool News, and I was always on those sites, looking up what movie information, what what new movie's coming out. And there was no warning of Nothing. Yeah. No nothing. And as an, however old I was in 2008, as a man, as a young man, I was like, how is this possible? It felt like the magic of cinema was back. Yeah. How did they slip one by me? How did the they internet? slip one by me? And this kind of felt like the new trailer kind of felt like exactly. that Exactly. The new trailer did feel like that. Yeah. And I'm really appreciative of that because that type of thing has not since been replicated. They've mm-hmm. never, they have not been able. And in fact, I don't know if anybody's really trying other than JJ. Probably not. But no if one's... I made a movie, I would want everyone to know about it from the second it started. <laughs> I would want there would be no mystery whatsoever. The script would be online day one. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and that's the way you'd do it. Sure. But the way JJ was doing it with Cloverfield is is that he wanted it to be a complete surprise, just like back in the day when you were a kid and you didn't know when what movies yeah. were coming out, and you went to the theater to see Willow or Honey I Shrunk the Kids or some shit over and over. Again. And then you would see the trailer for Roger Rabbit, or you'd yeah. see, the, and you'd be like, "Whoa, what the fuck is Roger Rabbit?" Right. Or you had the Disney Channel and you saw special previews of Roger Rabbit. I totally Rabbit forgot that you would not know what movies were coming out. Yeah. Until the big screen told you. Until the big screen told now you. Now your watch tells you. Yes. And I don't like it. Your watch tells you what movie's coming out and you yeah. can watch the trailer for it on your watch. Yeah. And the thing is, is like there is this aspect of it that's like, oh man, here we are. We're in the future and this is amazing. Mm. But there's the other aspect of it that's like, man, I miss being surprised and I miss the feeling I had in the theater yeah. watching that Cloverfield trailer for the first time. And it was from that moment when I was like, I need to first find out what the fuck this is. Yeah, what yeah. movie is this? And then next, and then I what need to... the head off. The yeah, what was it? Is it a monster movie? Yeah. Is it... Is it a lion? Is it a lion? Yeah. Is it a Voltron movie? Yeah. What is it? You and know? Just, I, is it Godzilla? Is it another Godzilla movie? Uh-huh. I remember that. Yeah. I remember thinking it was Godzilla. And so then from I remember... That, it, what else did you remember? Yeah. Uh, just... Uh, see, chronologically, I'm all effed. But I, I remember everyone at once not knowing what it was. So that sent everyone to the scour the internet and to become and to dissect this trailer yeah. and that's where this whole game thing came from i became obsessed yeah as did i and it took over my life and i basically i was on fake my spaces day and night fake my spaces for the characters there was yeah. that rob account yep there was uh there was uh hud's account there HUD's was account. marlena's account um and uh, you're right. They fake. They had face, fake MySpace pages, and then and then I joined this forum called the Unfiction Forum. Okay. 
the UNF. And uh, I joined back in 2007. Uh-huh. That's when the trailer came out, basically. Yeah. I think. Or maybe it was maybe it was before that. Maybe it was like a little bit before that. But, um, and uh, I, I joined the uh, Cloverfield forum, and everyone's like dissecting the teaser because it eventually came out come Putting out the poster in different yeah. like mirroring the poster be like there's a monster you can yeah, see it yeah, right exactly. there exactly the if clouds make out the poster right. <laughs> if you cut the poster in half and mirror it and put these two halves together for whatever reason you could see that there's clearly you, a monster yeah. and it was <laughs> yeah. like a lot of the stuff was a stretch and that's the thing that happens with the internet too is like somebody thinks they have a hunch and then they just the whole internet goes off on that but then oh, somebody yeah. finds some real shit but that was the funniest part of the of the ARG for me, which was that nobody really like some like some people were so off that now yeah. it's hilarious. Uh, but but and then some people, you're right, they would flip the poster and you'd be like, "There, that's the monster's face in right. the clouds." When you flip, when you stick the posters together, and it's like, no man, there's no way. Yeah, there's no way. It's too because you could tell when somebody is it's a bit of a reach. It's like if you fold <laughs> the one dollar bill twenty seven thousand times, it's the Illuminati, dude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you fold anything a thousand, or it's times. like what's that thing on the dollar? Or, yeah, the dollar. Like you can see the like twin towers falling and burning if you yeah. flip a ten dollar bill. If you or... manipulate it to look like that, <laughs> you can see anything you want there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, There's yeah. probably a dick on the dollar bill too. You know what I don't that. remember is the connection. To like the slusho and the underground, like drilling, how that came from the trailer. Because I remember Rob was starting a new job or something like yes, that. Yes, he was going to go work for the Tagruato Corporation. Is that how you say it? Ta- I've never known how to say it. I so just I say it that way because that's the way it's spelled. Tagruato yeah. or okay, Tagruato sure. or whatever. He was going to work in Japan. I used to call it Ikea because I couldn't <laughs> say it the other day. Same. It's hard to pronounce both. Yeah. 46%. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad you asked that because there's an amazing article on Hit Fix, okay, which is one of my favorite movie websites as well, along with Slash Film and Ain't It Cool. I don't go to Ain't It Cool so much anymore. Slash Film's kind of my OG now, mm. um, but hit, on Hit Fix there is an article written by uh, mm-hmm. Donna Dickens, the at, Donna Dickens, the Donna Dickens at mildly amused on Twitter, and she tweeted out. Or someone from HitFix tweeted out, for the evening crowd, what J.J. Abrams didn't put in Cloverfield, does it finally matter? And this uh, author, or this uh, journalist, what have you, wrote up this amazing piece about everything, and it totally refreshed my memory. It's basically like saying stuff like, um, in the moments leading up to Cloverfield, an extensive ARG, which is an alternate reality game, for those of you that don't know what we're talking about when we say ARG. Thank you. Which is outside of a movie in our real world. An alternate reality game uh, surmises that it's in the reality of the movie, you mm-hmm. know, but we can play along. Everything is in game. Everything's in game. IG, baby. Mm-mm. Uh, an extensive ARG left a trail of bread com- crum- <laughs> Ooh, not bread crumbs. Bread Ooh, bread crumbs. <laughs> About the internal lore of this universe, the Cloverfield universe, that was deep and delicious. Mm -hmm. So much so that fans were disappointed when nearly none of it mattered. Yeah. Or even came up. Yeah. And that was kind of fucked up. But it also made it our fun little secret thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Like Slusho kept showing up in different shows that would never matter. Yeah, it was in Heroes and then it showed up in Star Trek later on. Mm. Um, it says here, but perhaps Bad Robot was merely laying the groundwork for future installments. Here's a quick primer on the important players in the Cloverfield universe. Now, if I had done my research, I would be going over this, essentially. But since this amazing writer did it already, yeah. we've already credited her. And we've said go to hitfix.com to check out her stuff. So I'm just going to run down some of the stuff she wrote here about the things. Because hers is just she comprehensive. She did it the most, the most efficient way. The, and honestly, I, she did it better than I would have ever been able to. Yeah. So. Um, number one, it says the Tagurado Company. It says now this is all stuff from the ARG, yeah, and this is going to refresh your memory. Some underwater drilling company. Yes. Are they an oil company? Yes. Okay. And they were looking for the seabed nectar in the and the that's sweet, what was sweet the nectar. secret ingredient in slusho, which made it so addictive. Yeah. And they dug too deep, and apparently that woke clover or something. Sure. They scratched the back of a monster that's been sleeping for some time. Or, because remember at the end of the movie, there's that thing that crashes into the, into the ocean. Yeah, so why would the there's drilling There's speculation matter? that there was, the drilling kind of like stirred it, and then destroying the Tagrado like, uh, 
station that the, that the activists did broke a satellite and then a satellite came down and like opened up the bigger area that let Clover out. So there I don't know, were, maybe. There were, I do remember that. There were activists that didn't want the deep sea drilling. Yeah, so remember they that? they attacked the floating, they had some kind of floating it was deep a station. sea drilling station. Yeah. And so that made a satellite fall out of the sky. I don't know. I can't. I can't remember. Maybe. Maybe it talks about it here. Yeah. Uh, okay. So back. Seems in like 19- a big operation for a bunch of hippies who didn't want <laughs> yeah, oil a drilling. drilling. Like we got to take out the satellite, dude. We got to. <laughs> we got to fucking listen to Hall and Oates, and then we got to <laughs> take out the satellite. Uh, the, back in 1945, Tagorado <clears throat> Company was founded as a mining company with drilling operations in southern Japan. The company continued to expand until the 1980s when a series of scandals rocked the company and the founder, Kentaro Tagruato, committed suicide. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. He's a troubled new boy. Um, in the wake of this disaster, Tagruato was, brought by, was bought by Ganu Yoshida, who was specifically looking for a company to head his international offshore drilling operation. Mm-hmm. Remember his name. He will be returning... We will be returning to him shortly. And then in 2007, a Tagorado employee claimed the company had found an amazing discovery, quote unquote, days later, which I think ends up being the seabed nectar, which uh-huh. they use in their slusho shit. Days later, the employee and his entire family were found dead due to a gas explosion. Uh-huh. Later that year, the Chuai drilling station opening the mid in the mid Atlantic off the coast. Oh, opened in the mid Atlantic off the coast of New York City. And that was that's the station. Right. Tido wave, T I D O wave. That is That's the name the of the name. activist. Yeah, you got it. Falzone yeah. over here sure. remembering all this. This shit. is just see, I've got it in front of me, and yeah. some of this I didn't remember. So you're remembering this shit without seeing this shit. So I'm doing good. the commenting that uh, I'm being reminded of all these things. I think I'm that's great. To add some color to it. Yeah, you're adding, and there's that audience element of it too. That if some of you listening to this were part of the ARG, then you're also along with Mike, going yeah. like, "Oh shit, that's the name of the activist." And yeah. if you don't know what Cloverfield is, why are you listening to this? Yeah, don't. This makes no sense. <laughs> no, you can listen because we'll joke about shit. And maybe you'll like this. Maybe it's fun. It's going to be great. We just got to get everybody caught up first. The new station was the last straw for environment environmentalists of Tidal Wave. The guerrilla group had previously hacked into Tagorado's website to display how damaging the company was to the world's oceans. Mm. The Tidal Wave website is still operational. You can check it out right now. On it, you can see them denounce the products sold by Tagorado's subsidiary, Slusho. The event, quote unquote, mentioned was a secret mission to infiltrate the Chuai station or the Chowi station uh, and uncover that. whatever Tagorado was up to. It didn't go well. Now, remember this? The video diaries of Tidal Wave activist Teddy's girlfriend are still accessible with the password. Now, if you guys were part of this, you guys oh. went this deep, you'll even remember the password, what the password was, which was J J L loves T H. Oh my God, yeah. And they you were remember? like vlogs yes. almost. Yes. I don't remember what any of them said though. It was just her kind of talking about her boyfriend and her day. And then I remember and how like the boyfriend one of the, didn't come back or Yeah, because her boyfriend like was one of the activists. Yeah. And I guess he brought home some of the seabed nectar. Yeah. And she like tried it. And then she freaks out. In one of the vlogs, yes. she, like, freaks out. And then she has, like, a shit fit or something. And she kind of goes crazy. Yeah. And then you never hear from her again. But then in Cloverfield, she's, like, passed out on the couch in Rob's party. Oh, my God. So she's in there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's See, how that, fucking meta this shit is. That's the first thing that my attention... Somebody gave me the password to that thing. Yeah, yeah. And that was the first JL thing. JL loves right. TH. And then somebody was like, that That was the connection. Somebody's like, yeah. that girl's in the trailer. Yes, yes. And she's in the yeah. trailer. No and... mention of her in the movie. No. At no, all. you don't know who the fuck she is if you're just a movie watcher. But it's kind of like if you when you go see the movie... You're like in it with all those people. And like, hey, we all, it's a weird thing in the theaters. Yeah. Like, you're wondering who recognizes the girl and who's like waiting yeah, for all those Beth. answers. And also, uh, is it Beth? Was it Beth? Or Beth is the girl. I don't know. Beth sounds familiar to me. I don't know why yet. I'm having okay. trouble with it. Sure. But Wait, Beth is, isn't that the main love interest in the. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but, um, Dead. All of them dead. Dead. Dead, yeah. dead, Hard. dead. Dead yeah. is disco, baby. Sure. To save time, HitFix has linked all of her excerpts together below. So you can watch all of her old vlogs cool. on HitFix on the, in this article. She had so many subscribers, I remember. In it, you can see her slowly become unglued based on whatever substance Teddy sm- smuggled 
to her from the Chuai site. That's sweet nectar, I can only That's assume. Sweet, sweet nectar. When Teddy went missing, his sister Alsie Alsie Henson sounds s- made up. Set up to uh, set up a blog cron- to chronicle her search. While the Chuai station was destroyed, Tagarado Company blamed Taito Wave for the destruction. Though Taito representative claimed both that the Chuai station was destroyed before their escape or before their rescue o- uh, op for Teddy got there and there was never any oil to begin with so they weren't even doing oil shit there no they what were, were doing they sketchy doing? nectar they shit were drilling. they were doing sketchy nectar shit they steve were drilling. yeah i wasn't there i can't tell you for sure but they were drilling. it sounds and forgive the pun because we're dealing with sea things a little fishy <laughs> all right Leo yeah fishy. and out of the blue yeah out of the deep blue, things are getting a little fishy. Number three, Slusho. Here's where my baby boy comes in. A subsidiary of Tigerado Company and one of the most popular series of drinks in the world, Slusho products can be seen throughout Cloverfield in the background with the slogan, You Can't Drink Just Six. You Can't Drink Just Six, the classic slogan. It is that never quite caught on. Never caught on, but I had it on my car. I had a slusho car. Did you? But did you put the words "can't yes. drink just sick"? Yes. Did you? Up on the back glass, it had a thing across the top that says "you can't drink just six. Great. I was. I, I went all out on this shit. Some of you may have even seen it on the road if you were in Los Angeles. What they, real life thing would you? I I really like you can't eat just one. <laughs> Who's sitting there being like, six. okay, I'll do five, but I don't know if I could. No, it's saying that you get to your sixth one yeah. and you're like, I got to have another one. You need more. You can't just drink six. That's all, that's too many. So it's like you're on your third. Oh, so good. You're on your fifth. Yeah. Mm. You're on number six and you're like, fuck it. I'm going for seven. Yeah. Eight too much. even. Too much. Can't drink just six. Anyway. It is designed to be consumed in mass addictive quantities. Oh, that shit. website is also still active. I remember on that website, it was very cartoonish. Yeah, it was. And you can go there. It's like, yeah, very well-branded, like anime type thing. And you can go kind of make your own flavors. Yes, you could. And they were all represented by little robots Robots. in space. Yes. Which, of course, okay, I don't want to get ahead of our. But that led everyone to think that maybe there's robots. Maybe it's Voltrons. Like maybe this confirms Voltron because there's robots. Uh Uh-huh. Absolutely, and and everyone was like in the whole right like uh, uh, Transformers thing, and I remember they said flat out there was like an info section. <sighs> Getting too ahead of myself, there was it's okay when you go to the slusho thing. Yes, for a while it was a mouth. It was right, yeah, and the mouth would say random shit. Yeah, I think it was a whale or something. Yeah, right? and some of the random things were creepy and could have... They were creepy, yeah. They were like the sweet nectar, and they all referenced the nectar. Yeah. And on the site where you could combine the little robot flavors, there was, the main thing was they would all interact with this thing. It looked like a clam or something, which yeah. represented like what they were drilling for. The seabed nectar. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. like they were trying to educate the general public about what the weird was. thing that You're they You're right. Found. You remember. You're yeah. absolutely fucking right. Roger. Um, And it says here from the website, one fateful day. Uh, oh, well, there's a whole story of Slusho here, but it says... He, he echoed what he would make his mother's dream live to make the tastiest drink unlike anything on earth because the ingredient was discovered on the deep ocean floor mm. under amazing pressure and in the most extreme cold. Ganu knew he had to serve the ingredient in a near frozen state to preserve its freshness. So anyway, they, they did dig into the ocean to find it and that like little nectar was like the thing. Yeah. But also, do you remember the 11808 website? Yes. This doesn't really talk about it here. Really? Yeah, it it's doesn't weird talk about it that in they this article. such a... A pivotal part of the ARG, I'd say. Yeah, because basically what that website was was a collection of photographs. Yeah. that um, And it was kind of without explanation. It was just a pile of photographs, and you can move the mouse around, and it would flip around the photos, yeah. and there yeah. were different like symbols, some yeah. of which matched the – um, there was kind of a symbol on everything that would tell you that it was in-game. Yeah, I think it was that sword, right? It the was like a sword. sword. It was like a – yes. Yeah. And uh, – there was a person in one of these pictures because eventually the pictures went away after the movie came out and the 11808 sign was just a like a wanted picture or a missing picture yeah, for somebody. I right. think that was Teddy. Yeah, you're right. Maybe. You're this right. This is all vague. No, I think you're right. I also haven't slept since the movie came out. And yeah. This, we're talking eight great, years though. ago. Thank you so much. I do push-ups. So I'm looking at this thing and this is that guy's – this is that girl's – 
ex-boyfriend. Yeah. Right. So now he's on this missing poster. Yeah. And there's no mention of that because, and then people were saying that that guy in the missing poster, uh, that was a small part. <laughs> you could see him on the bridge when they're all trying. to Yeah, they did the say that. They did say that. I don't Never know if that confirmed. Was confirmed though. Never confirmed. We don't know. Anyway, what is but the, on, remember the woman also, who actually remembers? Well, no, things. remember on that site too, because this article doesn't mention the site. But remember on that site, yeah. After the movie, there was still there was more. They like all these new pictures showed up. I don't know if I remember the new. And ones. then they were photos of like destroyed beaches with like beached whales, yeah, bloody yeah, yeah. beached whales that have big bites taken out of yeah, them. Yeah, like what happened to these whales? Yeah, but it's like also daytime, right? So, so it was, so what we were assuming was, was that these were photos taken after the incident, mm. after the movie, because Clovey was still alive. Sure. So I don't know. That was part of it too. But yeah, you would flip the pictures and there would be like fucking numbers and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And if you waited too long, which scared oh, yeah. the shit out of me several it times. It scared me too. The monster would roar. Yeah. If you just like, it, and normally, let's be serious, when you're looking at all these pictures and looking for symbols and zooming in on the shit, really, you're dead silent. Oh, you're, and not only that, you're concentrating. Sure, your eyes are, your nose is on the screen. Yeah. And it's dead silent and you maybe are illuminated by the light of the screen. And, and maybe your else. speakers are a little too loud little from loud. that. Or you were listening to. You were listening, to, yeah. you were listening to, to eight uh, Adidas, Adidas by Corn. Yeah. yeah. And you're sitting you're there. listening to Lane Stately. You're listening to Alice in Chains. The Alice's Alice Chains. Chains. And you're listening to all <laughs> these things. Maybe you paused it because mom says macaroni's red and yeah. then you the, but your speakers are still loud. And yeah. boom, that roar would come out. And maybe that would be it for the night. Maybe, maybe you'd pee-pee. be like tiny peeps, tiny peepees in your pants. That's what we got next. So here's what it says. Tido wave believed slush show to be dangerous. And that Ganu's wealth had brought off F- had bought off FDA approval. Okay. The video of Teddy's girlfriend appears to confirm this armed with this knowledge. Let's look at the official synopsis for 10 Cloverfield lane. Oh yeah. We're, we're up to the present almost now we're up to the present. The majority of the movie takes place in an underground cellar and revolves around a young woman who wakes up in the cellar after a severe car accident and fears she has been abducted. Mm -hmm. Her captor, a doomsday prepper tells her he saved her life and that there has been a terrible chemical attack and that, has left the outside uninhabitable. That man is played by John, John Goodman. Goodman. John Goodman has been 55 since 1993. <laughs> <laughs> he really has. He has. Yeah. John Goodman has been the same age since he's been famous. Honestly, he might be the same age since he was on Roseanne. Yes. Roseanne, Roseanne, a dad. He was a dad yeah. forever. He's been he- a dad Kind of like how Leslie Nielsen always had gray hair. Always. There was no Leslie Nielsen without gray Leslie hair. Leslie Nielsen, uh, Nielsen. Lil, 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 Lil Nielsen <laughs> has, without a doubt, always had that head. Without a doubt. As I a don't young doubt boy. that he had a baby's body at some point. Let's be realistic. With white hair. But he came out with an old man face and white hair. But he's always had that white hair. Maybe he's always scared had him it. when he was a boy. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Her captor, a doomsday prepper, tells her he saved her life and that there has been a terrible chemical attack that that has left the outside uninhabitable. And the only DVD they have is King Ralph. She does not know what to believe, and as tensions rise, she decides she must escape regardless of the terrors that await outside. Now, Bad Robot says 10 Cloverfield Lane is a blood relative of Cloverfield, and this is what this uh, author surmises. A horrible car accident and a chemical attack are on are an interesting premise on their own, but couple it with the knowledge that the Tagra Auto Company was feeding the populace an unstable substance mm. they mined from the bottom of the ocean, one that angered a baby monster. And by the way, it was a baby monster. We were we got that confirmation was just a that it was a monster. real baby, and that was a huge baby, huge baby. It and ripped the head off the national state park, ripped it right robot off. or whatever they call that thing. But also. The French, the French's gift, the Frenchman's gift is what that was. It was made of chocolate, chocolat, <laughs> chocolate. But the thing is, is uh, Mr. Grumpy Pants yeah. was a baby, and I read also Drew Goddard, the writer of Cloverfield, said that he was scared. He didn't know what he was doing. He was sure. just a scared little boy. He was just a lee. So that means that that thing has parents. And yeah. if that's a baby. How big are the fucking parents, man? But where is this thing? Li- Where's this thing in this family Apparently. living? The world's not that big. Apparently, it's in the under the ocean. 
the, oh, the ocean's so big. I've always said it. The ocean's huge. Yeah, you I have, have that one said T-shirt it. that says the ocean's so big. You have a shirt that says the ocean's so big, and you wear it a lot. I do wear it all the time. And people ask you. It's tough to wear it underneath stuff because the T-shirt's so big. And it is a big T-shirt. It is a big T-shirt. <laughs> anyway, so so what this they're thing saying has is parents. Things get more interesting. Is this movie dealing with the fallout of slush saturation? Is mm. John Goodman's character really a doomsday prepper? Or is he part of Tidal Wave? Shit. So anyway, but this what this author is saying, which is most important, and thank you again for all that all that um research. Yeah, that's awesome. 37%. I do want to say that <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't have the charger for the computer that we're recording the podcast. Today. Oh, you're just saying it, huh? You're just saying it. You have to. You gotta say you it. You're right. saying it. <laughs> Listen, it's so we don't get shut down by the Targoatos. Okay, so, but wave. what we're saying, what I'm saying is, is that this person's theory is that the most important thing about this article is that they're hoping all of that stuff. That was involved in the original Cloverfield movie, Tiger Auto, Tidal Wave, yeah. the Seabed Nectar, all that stuff was it just went nowhere. It was just for us all to kind of like experience outside the movie. And not yeah. and don't get me wrong, I absolutely one hundred percent appreciate it. I'm not saying that it was fun. It was for nothing. Yeah. I'm saying it's still a special thing that I remember that was really fun and was unlike any other movie promotional experience I've ever had yeah. and have had since. Right. Um, a lot of people tried afterwards. Yeah, uh, they I did. I was even talking to Elliot about like the Dark Knight stuff. Yeah, they tried. And, and there was some cool Joker stuff. Things. And there was, but it was nothing. It was like a like a sugar-coated version of what it, all... Because this yes. stuff scared me after a while. It was like, you know what it was? It was a forced version. It was a yeah. forced version of that. Where the studios are just throwing money at, like, yeah, hide some packages all over the world or some shit. Yeah, like, yeah. have a Take fan pictures. find a Joker card or mm-hmm. something. Um, and that's all fine and good, and I'm sure that was fun to a lot of people, but the, the Cloverfield one was so... No one had ever done it before, and it just felt so organic and not yeah. forced and creative, and the story was rich. Mm-hmm. And do you remember there was a manga that came out? What's a manga? A manga oh, is, the, a, is a um, comic book comic from Japan. Book. Yeah. yeah. Do you yeah, remember yeah. the comic book? I remember looking at it, but I couldn't read the words. Well, I couldn't either, and I feel like someone translated it later on, but I remember when those pages were scanned and released online for everybody mm-hmm. to look at. It was basically about like a cult that worshipped Mr. Grumpy Pants, and there was mm. like a girl that gets captured by the cult, and and then you see Clovey in it. I don't know. It was interesting, but but there was such a rich Interesting backstory. girl held captive by, by a, a cult. crazy guy interesting interesting and what we just did what percent are we at right now 35 with 35 percent left in the battery we just possibly made a connection maybe we did make a connection that i haven't read yet who knows that's interesting man i did and that's an interesting theory i am bad at making the right connections i'm bad at i absolutely will sure and i can help you with that thank you and um I will take something that might be a thing and I'll run with it until somebody says, oh, well, absolutely not. Well, actually, that'll bring us to something interesting here, too, about 10 uh, Cloverfield Lane, which I wanted to bring up but yeah. in a bit. But Do you think it's weird that they're underground and the monster lives underground and maybe try to get up higher? You ever think of that? <laughs> How long do you want me to think about it? Not long. Well, I've thought about it now. Okay. On reddit.com slash r slash 10 Cloverfield Lane, <laughs> which is where I get a lot of my information. And that's where about I'm getting everything. About, <laughs> about hey, shampoo. Hey, where's the nearest Whole Foods? <laughs> reddit.com. Where's the closest ATM, Chase ATM? <laughs> to Cloverfield. Hey, what's my birthday again? <laughs> Uh, but I go there and I am still part of the unfiction forums and I actually signed in and ga- and sounded off. I was like, well, oh, here we go, kids, we're back. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't been there in a couple of days, but I've been following 10 Cloverfield Lane subreddit on, on, uh, on Reddit. And, uh, someone named Blue Politico has, uh, assembled a list of official and unofficial and possible and debunked leads Ooh. and including Lead boys? leads from, and including fan theories 
on 10 Cloverfield Lane and its connection to Cloverfield and Celestio and what have you. Right. And one of the biggest leads is a company called Swamp Pop. Oh, you were saying. Yeah, so Mike Mike and I were talking about this as I was letting Mike into my secret dungeon where we're recording this. Yes. But uh, sorry about how dark it was, and I'm sorry you almost fell. Why are there always drips? It's atmosphere. Sure. That and there's bad plumbing in the caves. Mm-hmm. But Swamp Pop is uh, potentially the new slush show. Okay. And, so the new thing that won't be answered. Well, but here's the thing, though. I'm skeptical about Swamp Pop. Yeah. Because here's here's the story of the connection of Swamp Pop. And mm-hmm. this is news for you, Mike. Sure. And, I, and I'm glad I'm get, I get to tell you about this. Because there's a lot of people listening to this that are probably like, what the fuck are you talking about? But now we're talking about 10 Cloverfield Lane. Yeah. And for those of you who didn't follow the Cloverfield ARG and are like, oh, I feel like I'm not going to be able to follow this because I didn't follow the Cloverfield ARG. Guess what? We're all in this together starting now. Yeah. That's that's the purpose of this poo cast. That is the per- that's the purpose of Clovey Field, Cloverfields. Cloverfields. It's the it's so that we can all kind of like do this together and have fun and you don't have to do any legwork and you don't have to like follow along with the shit. We'll cover it for you guys. Yeah. We'll we'll help you figure the everything out and we'll gather up all the news and stuff and this should be fun. Should be. God damn, I hope it is. If it's not, we've messed up. Ooh, blew Oops. it. We might have blown it. So uh, what? So basically, we're starting fresh together right now. And yeah. so Swamp Pop is a is is the biggest lead right now. Sure. And the reason why is because let me tell you the story of Swamp Pops and Need its it. connection to Ten Cloverfield Lane. Back when they were filming Ten Cloverfield Lane, back when it was called like the Cellar or something like that. I know yeah. people are yelling at their radios because that's actually not what it was called, but it was actually written as something else. And also another theory I have too is, is that because apparently people have seen screenings of this film hmm. and say the connection to Cloverfield is not there, and they're like, I don't know how the fuck they're going to connect this to Cloverfield if it is connected. Sure. Um, but I feel like the decision to connect it with Cloverfield came in post production, oh. and I have a theory that some smart person at Paramount was like, "Holy shit! Everyone wants to see another Cloverfield." Or at least a bunch of nerds do. Right. Why don't we just connect this with Cloverfield? Interesting. So you and think it's like an afterthought? I think it was an afterthought after they shot the film. The film was written, shot, and everything. And honestly, if my theory is correct, it's not that difficult for them to do it. Hmm. Depending on, you know, because there's some information about the script of this film out there as well. And uh, that's available online somewhere under the moniker of the seller. Or especially if it. this was, and again, I know nothing about this, but especially if this was like a movie that was written separately and was so vague that whatever, like a, um, uh, not so much a rear window, but like a movie where you don't see the monster and it's so vague that it could be anything. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm, and they, right. and they and if they're playing off of that, then it's perfect. Yeah. yeah and yeah. honestly, I don't have a problem with that. No, I'm I just totally want okay some it. satisfying. Doesn't have to answer everything, but I I would like some satisfying like winks at the past. Yeah. Or see, I'm any okay. kind of anything that they start now. We'll say the swamp pop thing. I'd like something, some wink at something. Yeah, and I, exactly. I don't need there to be like, what happened to Grumpy Pants and, you know, where, what happened to Beth and Rob and I don't need any, I don't need all of that. All I need is like, if it is just a blood relative to Slu- to Cloverfield, which is what J.J. Abrams has been quoted as saying about 10 Cloverfield Lane, mm. then all I really care to see is maybe like a mention of some they tried to bomb because my theory is the reason why they're in a bomb shelter is because when they nuked Mr. Grumpy Pants in New York in New York it created a nuclear fallout all over you know the East Coast yeah and so people were like oh fuck we're all gonna get fucking radiation or we're gonna die and so they go down into bomb shelters sure. if they can yeah and so that's my theory of the connection with Cloverfield mm-hmm. which would be cool but I, you know any nod would be fine I'm with you I'm yeah, with you yeah, as yeah. long as there's a nod I'm with it so and anyway then there's that whole thing of what's going on up top anyway go ahead. yeah yeah so Swamp Pop so when this mil- when this MILF when this movie was being filmed yeah um there was a drink called Swamp Pop that is actually a real drink uh and I believe it is available in the south okay and while they were filming the movie, they had Swamp Pops on the set. Interesting. They were drinking Swamp Pops. And that's a real drink that exists. 
and it's just part of what they were, you know, there's some photos of the set or something, and people were drinking Swamp Pop. That's mm-hmm. it. That's literally it. Was it ma- It was a thing before this? It's a thing that exists. It's a drink that Is exists. Is it new or has it's not it existed? New. Not new. It's been so around. it's been around. It's been around, and it exists. Yeah. So that's my first indication that, like, this isn't the new Slash Show. Right. But. They're all drinking Jolt Cola. And now we're supposed to go down the Jolt Cola world. It's all Jolt Cola now. Yeah. Go to the Jolt Cola website and <laughs> yeah. type in it's a lion. <laughs> and you'll find out the connection. 118 O Jolt Cola. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, here's the, so here's where it starts to get fishy, though. Here's where people start to go like, oh, I think it's ARG. I think it's yeah, a game. Yeah. These are me. It. These are people like me. Yes. Yeah. So here's where it starts to get kind of interesting. Swamp Pop put... On their website, you can't drink just four. Oh, okay. Okay? Yeah. More efficient than Slusho. And... By two. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, and so everyone's like, what? And they're like, this is it. This is the connection. In game, we're start- it started, boys and girls. Let's do it. Let's start yeah. digging. Let's look into the page source. Let's start typing in passwords. Let's contact the people that run the company. Yeah. Let's order some. Let's get it. You know, and by the way, their sales probably went crazy these right past now. couple of weeks. Sure. There's eight nerds buying all the Buying shit. everything. Yeah. And so let me tell you this. Which I will look into when we're... For the next episode of this, I want to be drinking Swamp Pop. We should be sponsored by Swamp Pop by yeah. this point. And, and, uh, you can't pay for just one. <laughs> Please send Literally, us a case. you can't. We will not ship just one drink to you. You have to order 75 a cents pack. plus $15 shipping and handling. <laughs> Might as well. So here's the other thing about Swamp Pops. Um, what was I going to say about it? I, I thought you had another thing. Uh, oh. They, um, you can buy uh, in their, in their flavors. When you go to like flavors or yeah. like buy online or where is it? Buy online. When you click on buy online, there's a, there's an option for four pack of this flavor, four pack, fact, four pack of this flavor, a case of 24. Okay. And there's a long-term shelter supply that's oh, wow. sold out for $4,000 and when you click on it, it says this is a fifteen year this is a fifteen year ration of assorted flavors, spe- specially packaged for extended periods of dry storage, for when there doesn't seem to be anyone around. Available by special requests only. Mm. Now, do you get the reference there? Yes. In the trailer for Ten Cloverfield Lane, there's yes. they're playing. The song. I think we're alone now. Doesn't seem to be anyone doesn't around. Doesn't seem to be anyone around. Gonna need some swamp pop. <laughs> yes, you remember that part yes. of this classic song? Yes. So anyway, so now, again, people are like, okay, that's, this is it. Seems like it. Seems like it. Long-term shelter supply. Uh, reference to the song. For when there doesn't seem to be, yeah, reference to the song. Yeah, John Goodman on the can. John, <laughs> John Goodman's face <laughs> on the page. Massively huge, filling the page. <laughs> John Goodman's angry face. (laughs) So people are thinking. (laughs) John Goodman's angry, ageless face. (laughs) John Goodman's timeless visage. (laughs) It fills the screen. (laughs) John Goodman carved into a coin on a mountainside. Angry face. Swamp pop. John Goodman traces of his face in the the lost city of Atlantis after they find it. (laughs) There's a statue. <laughs> statue of John Goodman under the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> John Goodman releasing an autobiography, 55 to life, forever. <laughs> so anyway, there's yeah. all these connections. And so what are you thinking right now? Um, You're thinking this is Endgame. If they were drinking it on set, they yes. released pictures of them drinking it on yes. set, which of course is gonna it being related to clothes. These are field. unofficial pictures, by the way. These are just set photos of okay. like crew but that where, way back when the movie was being filmed, they took pictures of of like, oh, I'm working on a movie or whatever. Yeah, was never meant to be. How predominantly fe- could you see the pictures? How predominantly featured are these? Since when do you notice the kind of soda? Somebody's drinking. Well, in because I set think pictures? so. Here's how that. Here's how that happened. 
when once it, people found out that this was a movie that was filmed a long time ago and a script was written a long time ago and has no connection to Cloverfield, people were like, "Holy shit, let's look up this movie and see all this see what we can find out about when they were filming the movie." Yeah. So they found out it was originally called The Cellar, which again, I'm sorry, I'm probably getting that wrong, but if I'm right, then I'm dumb. Yeah, La Cellier. Uh, um so they checked out stuff about the Cellar movie and they found when they were filming it in Louisiana or wherever wherever they filmed it, there were photos of the crew. Because, you know, you see on Instagram now people working on a movie. They'll yeah. put a picture of the, like, clapboard or something or they'll yeah. put, like, here's the crew, like, hanging out at a bar or whatever. So, they, you know, p- fans of, of, the, of Cloverfield did some digging and found photos from the set of this movie. Right. With my theory that this was before there was any Cloverfield connection whatsoever, when it was just its own horror movie, right, or thriller or whatever, people what found if- photos of the set and they saw that there's something called Swamp Pop there, and they're like, "Holy shit, it's the new slush show! It's something called Swamp Pop. I've never heard of this. It looks yeah. like a made up drink. Uh-huh. And if this is a Cloverfield movie, there's a made up drink there, and this might be the new thing. Let's do it. And that's right. where that happened. You don't think there's any way." That this whole, let's say it was called The Cellar, let's say it was written as something else. You don't think, uh, to preserve, the thing that made the first movie so special wasn't that it was a great movie. It was all the stuff that you were talking about. Everything coming out of nowhere and it being this like euphoric, uh, everyone is surprised by this at the same time type situation. Wouldn't that lend itself to somebody writing a generic movie and keeping the name Cloverfield out of it for so long to keep that? um, Like, wouldn't you want to do that on purpose? I mean, I would spend years thinking, how can we take everybody by surprise again? Maybe write a whole movie and leave it vague enough to just insert the stuff at the last. Is that reaching? I would love that. Mm -hmm. If that were true, then I would be like, oh, so cool. There are people that give a shit still in the studio system. Yeah. Oh, man, there are writers that care and want to do fun shit and do new stuff. But you're too jaded. You don't but think that's But it's not real. just that I'm too jaded. It's just that... <sighs> jaded Smith. This is, what, this is what people... Jaded Pinkett Smith. <laughs> yeah. This is what people were saying. This is what Drew Goddard and Matt Reeves, who directed the movie, and J.J. Abrams, who produced... Drew Goddard wrote the film. Here's what they were all saying... Even like years after Cloverfield came out, when people would ask them, what's up with the Cloverfield sequel? Because when J.J. originally went to Comic-Con to talk about Cloverfield, he talked about how he brought his son with him to Japan and his son saw Godzilla stuff Mm -hmm. and was like, there's all this Godzilla stuff. What's the American equivalent of Godzilla? And J.J. was like, holy shit, there isn't an American equivalent of Godzilla unless you count King Kong, but... King Kong is like an ape, you know? Godzilla mm-hmm. is like this created prehistoric creature or right, whatever. Right, right. That That is a, 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 a cultural phenomenon, mm-hmm. a pop culture phenomenon. Uh, and so, you know, back when he was talking about Cloverfield, I forgot why I brought that part. <laughs> but I will say this. <laughs> I will say this. When they asked J.J. and Matt Reeves and Drew Goddard after the movie had been out for a while... What's up with Cloverfield 2? Yeah. They would all say, in one way or another, well, we want to do it. And they were even saying this while J.J. was making, like, the new Star Trek and shit. People mm-hmm. would talk to him when he made the second Star Trek movie uh, in press conferences or in, like, press junkets. What's up with Cloverfield 2? And he would say, we love, we would love to do it. Oh, that's the that's why I brought up the Godzilla thing. It's because JJ imagined this being a big franchise. Yeah, JJ wanted this to be literally the start of a new American type Godzilla series, mm-hmm. where we would get this big monster, and there would be other monsters, and there would be like you know like Mothra and fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. Godzilla and shit, um, which would have been fucking badass. I would I'm all for it. And in fact, it's not too late. They could probably it still could do be it. happening right. It now. It could be happening right now, and that's yeah. exciting as fuck. Yeah. So. Whenever they would ask them, what's up with Cloverfield 2, they would say, we want to do it, but we don't have the right idea. Mm -hmm. And they always told themselves. does it happen before? Does it happen after? Or is it during? Is there like like another perspective? Remember there was a kid on the bridge 
in Cloverfield who also has a little handheld camera. Yes. And they sh- pointed each They other. were saying that yeah, like yeah. maybe a sequel to Cloverfield would be like from the, another perspective yeah. of another How group. many mini DV tapes do you find after a <laughs> nuclear blast? <laughs> they survived nuclear blasts. Yeah. Mini DV tapes are the new cockroaches. It's that and rocks. Uh, 26%. But uh, so they would say you know, it would have to be a really good idea if yeah. we were going to do a Cloverfield sequel. And they would always say that. And so Drew Goddard even said at one point, well, I've got an idea, but everybody's busy. And, uh, you know, so basically it came down to like, well, it's never going to happen because mm. then JJ went off to make Star Wars. Drew Goddard went off to write like a whole bunch of crazy shit. Matt Reeves is directing the new Planet of the Apes movies. So it's like everybody's off doing their own shit. They've got their slates. They're booked. Yeah. So it's like, fuck, we're never going to get a Cloverfield. So to me, it feels like it would be amazing if this is the idea they came up with. And Mm -hmm. they were like, fuck yeah, let's do it in secret. And then they hired this Dan Trachtenberg guy. Yeah. Who actually was a YouTuber. Did you know that? Did not. Director of 10 Cloverfield Lane. Uh, fuck, I'm gonna get this wrong, but let me do it just a real quick. He used to be Renetto, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then he yeah. drank the Mentos. Actually, he's Zay Frank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Dan Trachtenberg, oh, Totally Rad Show. One of the three hosts of Totally Rad Show. Don't remember do you, it. You don't remember that? But I do love that he was from the YouTube. Yes, he was a host at Rev3, which is okay. which was part of the whole SourceFed thing at one point. I December that. Um, and... He also directed the Portal short, which is so fucking cool. What shortle, is it called? It was called. It's not a shortle. Oh, No Escape. It's called Portal No Escape, and okay. it's so cool. And I think JJ saw that and was like, oh, my God, this guy's amazing. And by the way, just really quick, sorry mm-hmm. to like – it's not really name droppy, and this might be gross, but guess what? What? I went to a Back to the Future event uh-huh. back when Pepsi. It was a Pepsi Back to the Future event or something. Okay. And my buddy Peter uh, Shredda from uh, Slash Film was there. And I was like, Peter, what's up, man? We start talking. And he introduces me to his friend who he was talking to there. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, dude, what's up? Dan I talked Squirtle. to this guy. What's that? Dan Squirtle. <laughs> what's up, the man? No, Zay Frank. It was Zay Frank. <laughs> no, uh, in walks the Cloverfield monster. <laughs> <laughs> He's been talking to Mr. Grumpy Pants, and I did not realize that. Apparently, there should be No, I was friend. talking to this guy, and we were talking about Star Wars and shit, and we were just nerding out. Sure. And then I'm like, okay, bye. And then the night 10 Cloverfield Lane trailer comes out, yeah. Peter texts me and says, guess what? Remember that guy I introduced you to at that party? Yeah. That's Dan Trachtenberg, the guy that directed this movie. You... I talked to him and hung out with him for a little bit. We could have had something. So, dude, well, guess what? I've got a connection. Maybe we can get him on the podcast. We got to text some, him. I would love least. to text him. Don't have his number. What if we did a text in? A lot of shows do call-ins and they have the audio from both of the people talking. That's true. What if I kept it going and you were texting him next to the microphone and we'll just relay what he said? That way we What's don't the have point to take up much of his time. What's the point of that? Well, we don't have to have a guest. And clean this place or whatever. Invite somebody oh, over. Oh, I would rather not food. invite someone here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We could just text them back and forth and read the text. The actual fire de- the fire department said there's a two-person maximum capacity here in this place. Good. Building. I don't feel like I have enough space to spin. I feel nervous. <laughs> this so is a beautiful apartment. I spoke with this guy, Dan Trachtenberg. Yeah, you were right there. And he said, and Peter told me he's working on something for Bad Robot. Mm-hmm. When we were there at that party, and I didn't think anything of it. And you didn't even ask another question. I didn't you ask. You didn't a damn ask. Thing. It's not Cloverfield, is it? <laughs> Eight years later, just the shot in the dark. I, you know what? I have said that so many times <laughs> to people. There was, I'll tell you, backstory. When I had my band, Mike Falzone and the Peppermint Trick, Love it. where we used to drive back and forth from New York City because we, for whatever reason, had shows in Tribeca. In the financial district at two o'clock in the morning every uh, weekend for every year of our existence for some reason. <laughs> Never quite made it out of Tribeca for some reason. Okay. Um, I used to say to keep the guys awake on the FDR going back to Connecticut, what if Cloverfield happens right now? What's That's our cool. plan? That's really cool. And they hated it because one, they had never seen the movie until years later. 
No, didn't want it. Wanted to sleep on the way home because it's four o'clock Does in the morning. Does that sound at any in any way similar to a question I've asked you a couple of times, which is, how would you react if I shot up into space? Are we gonna bring that to this? We're definitely not. You need to look at my eyes <laughs> and ask yourself through my eyes if you want to bring that. We're to not this. bringing that here yet. Then but isn't it similar? It. I'm it just saying similar. there's similarities. It is similar, but what's more realistic? Well, definitely Cloverfield. Yeah, what if Cloverfield happens It's right definitely now? more realistic because there plan? could be a monster in the ocean that we don't know about. So basically, Donald it's a long-winded Trump. way of saying if somebody said, oh, this is Dan Poopy Dragon Pants. Bird. Yes, he's working on something for Bad Robot. I'm almost positive that I would have said, <sighs> it's not the new Cloverfield. Uh, you're right. Mm-hmm. You're right. I But I guess I'm just... My head wasn't there. I was talking about Back to the Future. We were talking about Star Wars, and That's I just right, wasn't man. there. Dude, don't. You're right. You're right. It's Let's just because I felt like it was never going to happen. Understood. And, but everything is reinvigorated. Now, even if this is an afterthought, I'm really excited about even it. Even if it's an afterthought, I'm excited about it, too. And then to your point, I hope it is a planned thing. Me and too. if they end up saying it is and it really wasn't, I'm okay with that, too. I don't yeah. really care, as long as there's a connection. So basically— and As long as it's fun. But here's where my— uh, my I, my feelings of Swamp Pop aren't very solid, and here's where that comes from. Yeah, tell me where it breaks up. I feel like the fans ignited the Swamp Pop guys because uh, it's a small company, and they were trying to take in advantage. Louisiana, and I think they're trying to take advantage of this thing. Here's what I'll say, and this is just keeping it alive. Keep it alive. I We know from being YouTube people and how we make our living that some companies are quicker to catch on to the online stuff than others. True. I would say the majority of the time, if a company is known for making sodas, they're not all up on the internet no. stuff until somebody tips them off. Right. Like a marketing person, maybe a younger whippersnapper sure. comes along and says, you should be doing this. I don't know anything about this company. Right. Um, but it would seem as if somebody was like, hey, you should get on board and you should word this like this to drive people. I mean, <clears throat> it, I, that'd be cool too. If it, it, yeah. It's not out of the realm of impossibility that Paramount people were like, yeah, yeah they're already planning this. But mm-hmm. but the thing, the thing that keeps me skeptical is, is that these updates to their website – the Swamp Pop guys and these like little like tidbits of this movie yeah. updates didn't happen until after the trailer came out, until after people were started to like inquire. So like if well, this was the... an ARG yeah. planned, wouldn't it be so much cooler from a fan's perspective that that thing you can't drink just for yeah. and like the song reference had been there for like months, because then you'd be Absolutely. like, "This is ARG shit." Yes, in best case scenario, yes, yes. Um, I had a point, <laughs> and that point went like this. Because I <laughs> okay, oh, okay. I feel like if a company were to do that and hop on the bandwagon afterwards, and this is all conjecture. It's all conjecture. Yeah, if none company, of us know anything. To, to me. If a company was to hop on the bandwagon afterwards, it would be like, drink these if you love Cloverfield or something real fucking stupid like right. that. Okay, Not so you're saying like cryptic and subtle. Well, but I think it just, you know, it's a small company, so I feel like. So why cr- wouldn't you try to capitalize on all that shit in right. the most outwardly way possible? That's what Not I'm like hinting at. Well, because the way I feel is, is that these guys are probably cool. The guys that are running the Swamp Pop thing. Does it look like a cool And website? what's happening is, is that they've probably been bombarded with Cloverfield fans yeah. hitting them up and messaging them. Are you guys connected to Cloverfield? You can tell me. I won't tell anybody. Or like, yeah. what's going on with this ARG? Because there used to be this thing called Slusho. And I'm sure all of these fans just bombarded these guys with all of this Cloverfield stuff and they're probably thinking what the fuck's going on yeah and then someone there who's probably cool is like wait a minute it looks like this is like they think this is part of this thing yeah so let's have a little fun with it and sell some pop that would be a terrific idea I mean and I'm not upset about that either I'm not upset about that either because it's it's like 
go for it, Swamp Pop. You want to have fun with it? Especially because of the long-term storage thing. Yeah. Because that is... That's the thing that makes me, and I know that it would be designed this way, but that's the thing that makes me be like, well, that's a really good thing to have. Right. The movie's in a bomb shelter. Yeah, let's just do this. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, and it's... I don't think that's just some dude's or some person's idea at the soda company. I don't want that to be You think case. that that's paramount? Because I think that's such a good idea. Why not? I, could I see, would love it for at the very to be least, that. I could see you can't drink just for, let's make some vague reference, let's sell some pop. We have uh, four cases and six cases or whatever. But the storage thing? Okay, well, then you're going to love what's next. I can't wait. Because there's more. Oh, you didn't tell me there was I more. I didn't tell you You let everything. me get that excited? I'm almost asleep. I'm just going to fall asleep if I get any more excited. No, this is more stuff. Okay. In the trailer. What percent are we at right now? Do you want to know? Nope, keep going. In the trailer. Yeah. People have been tr- dissecting the trailer. Mm-hmm. As I try to, I got nothing. Well, you know, some people were talking about how... Uh, where is it? They punch in 4813 into the jukebox. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's some sort of thing. And uh, there's audio at the end of the teaser that people are talking about. Like, what's this audio bit? Is this something? And they were even dissecting things that they could see in the background in the bomb shelter. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. One of the things in the bomb shelter is the presence of the Eiffel Tower. Right. There's a lot of photos of the Eiffel Tower, apparently. There's like a painting of the Eiffel Tower there. And um, there's a big picture of the Eiffel Tower. And, uh, so, uh, Swamp Pop, fans from Cloverfield have been receiving their shipments of Swamp Pop drinks, which, by the way, congrats, Swamp Pop, for jumping in on this shit. You guys are probably making a killing right now. In the shipment, people are receiving puzzle pieces. Come on. Swamp Pop is sending puzzle pieces. In the trailer. And they're playing with puzzles in the trailer. Come on. I know. That's not I know, just Mike. somebody. At I know. Swamp. I'm That's telling you, it is. In there I too. feel like it is. That person. Maybe, well, okay. Then that person's the grandson no, okay, of okay. Zebediah Swamp Pop, and the company's been going under for a long time. He's <laughs> like, Pappy, I'll save the family. Wait. Okay. So let me. So how about this? Let me present you with this. Swamp Pop initially was like, "Let's have a little fun with this. You can't drink just for lyric to the song," and then. Dry cellar, you know, bomb shelter pack. Yeah. And that's that. Then Paramount got wise and was like, hey, they're having some fun with this. Why not? Let's just do this. Mm-hmm. We, we didn't, we, you know, we loved doing the ARG with Cloverfield originally. Let's talk to them. So I feel like a correspondence occurred. After the fact. Between, from, this is from when the trailer debuted and fans have already been bugging them. This is two weeks. This is my assumption. I feel like Paramount contacted them after the bomb shelter pack stuff because they're probably watching all the forums and stuff too. Yeah, why wouldn't you? And they probably contacted them and said like, this is great. We love what you guys are doing. We're not going to send you a scary cease and desist letter because yeah. we don't want you to be a part of this. And right. you're doing it's it coming, unofficially. Right, yeah. Yeah, and you're doing it without our permission to sell sodas. Yeah. So maybe they're like, let's work together. We're going to send you guys some stuff, Mm -hmm. and then you guys, like, include it in the ARG, and we'll have fun with it. Interesting. So I feel like this puzzle piece thing is now Paramount's inclusion. Mm -hmm. And I think now Paramount has accepted Swamp Pop as an official part of the ARG, but I don't think it originally was. Okay. I really feel like these Swamp Pop guys were just like, hey, let's have some fun with this and sell some soda. Here's what I'm going to do, okay? Now... From where I can only imagine the battery is in my mind. <laughs> I think we based on start... where the battery may be, based on where the battery was, <laughs> and my memories of that mere minutes ago, we should probably put a lid on it. Put a lid on this one. Okay, I'll save this okay. for next time. Okay, okay, okay. I'm present gonna... us with a question. Are you presenting us with a question? Or I'm some just going to tell you what I'm going to do. Present us with some ponderage. I'm going to go home. And I'm going to expedite some Swamp Pop. Good for you. Okay, good. So you're going to go digging into Swamp Pop. Yes. So the next episode, you'll have some Swamp Pop zingers. On this table, I will have Swamp Pop. We'll be drinking it. Hopefully it has I would love that. Let's order some Swamp Pop. Yes. I want puzzle pieces. I want me me and you to have puzzle pieces. Oh, and I didn't finish about the puzzle pieces, by the way. fuck. The puzzle pieces have Eiffel Tower stuff on them. Yeah. 
So what do you think about that? I think it's... So not only is it a connection to the trailer where they're putting a puzzle together, but yeah. it's also got an Eiffel Tower, which is in the trailer. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, so you... you is there anything else we need to know about the trailer before we wrap up this no. episode? No, no, no. There is so more stuff, but we can talk more about it next time. Awesome. But you're saying you're going to dig into Swamp Pop. Yes. Right now, you feel like they've always been in on this, and they've always been part of the ARG. I think it's too good. Especially if they were drinking that... I think it's too good without... And this is without even seeing any of it. I right. haven't seen the Swamp Pop photos from back in the day. Right. I haven't seen their website. And honestly, if I'm not mistaken, I think they're drinking Swamp Pop in the movie too. Okay. Well, come on. No, I'm still not. I'm still on the page that it just so, because it's a real drink. Who just if you're? It's a real drink. If you're doing a movie, and you set up, where was this movie filmed? I Do think you know? Louisiana. You're okay. You're the uh, I don't know what you call it. You're the craft person. Sure. You're gonna order Swamp Pop instead of Pepsi or Coke. Well, yeah, because maybe that person, you know, usually they'll hire in the region. Yeah. Because it's like a it's a union thing. When was the last time you personally worked on something that had like specific like Tom? Well, I've soda. never shot outside of the country although i have i did shoot in london i shot some stuff for... louisiana is in the united states of america yeah so that doesn't count london doesn't count right so but i'm telling you yeah you know if they hire there they hire regionally when they make a movie in like new orleans or louisiana or canada or whatever yeah instead of bringing the crew they usually you know and, and by crew i mean like you know their grips and their their camera people and their lighting people and mm -hmm. stuff like that instead of bringing them and lugging them across the country to a new place what they'll do is they'll bring their important must haves yeah. to louisiana let's say and then they hire their crew and their crafty and everybody and they're so regionally from there and what i'm saying is is maybe the crafty guy was like man i fucking love swamp pop it's some good shit yeah and and he decided to provide Swamp Pop to everybody. Uh -huh. And they were probably like, fuck it, let's put it in the movie. This is great. Yeah. So that's what I'm thinking. Or that's my assumption. if this thing was supposed to be a Cloverfield thing from the beginning. Which would be cool. You would absolutely say, well, what's the thing? What are we going to have while yeah, we're shooting the movie? Yeah, but why not just be Slusho then? Because it's too obvious. No, it's not. If they if it is a Cloverfield movie, yeah, and we didn't have any answers yeah, we had for nothing Slusho until... in the beginning. How are they going to keep? I'll tell you why. How are they going to keep something frozen in the fucking Fallout shelter? How are they going to keep something for weeks and weeks and weeks? It's a good point. Yeah, and here they specifically have a pack design, dude. I'm telling you, think you this is part I of think it, that huh? was the all thing. All right, all right. Well, I'm. I'm on the side of skepticism. And I like that we're on both sides. I think so too. Because now this is an interesting podcast. It was not when it started. <laughs> it didn't get interesting until 17%. But, uh, so, guys, with that, <laughs> let's say goodbye. What Clover a fun films. time we just had. This is great. This is great. It's a headgum podcast. It is. Probably. It's a headgum podcast. Mike uh, has some connections. I didn't do anything. Listen, we're trying to solve a mystery. We're trying to solve a mystery. We're doing and rewrite work. history. Yeah. DuckTales. DuckTales, we. So what we're doing is, we're just talking about Cloverfield. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to have some fun. There's going to be some laughs. Hopefully we can get some special guests in. Yeah. Uh, friends of friends who are Cloverfield fans, 10 Cloverfield Lane fans, and perhaps even people involved in the production of the film. Maybe That'd we can get great. Dan Trachtenberg to at least Skype in at some point. Text I don't see in. that out of the realm of impossibility. Nope. Emoji so, in. Yeah, right? Yeah. So, okay, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Yes. Uh, this is awesome. I hope this is going to be fun for you guys. I can't wait for you guys to all get in on this. And also, tell us your thoughts on this whole Swamp Pops thing. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves with all the other stuff they're digging into, because we'll get into that in the next episode. Yeah. But tell us what you guys think about the Swamp Pop thing. I guess we can talk in the Reddit, uh, the um, 10 Cloverfield Lane we subreddit. We could do hashtag Cloverfields. Hashtag Cloverfields on Twitter. Exactly. Uh, my name is Mike Falzone on Twitter and also everything else. Perfect. Yeah, mine's Steve Zaragoza on Twitter and everything else. Just send us your hashtag Cloverfields and your theories on Swamp Pops. And then maybe we'll read some on the next show. 100%. Love it. Mike? We did it. We did it. Yep. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Or listening. Thanks for listening. Uh -huh. And we hope to see you guys next time. 16%. 